You guys, it's just so easy to get distracted by shiny objects. But it's just that, distraction. Today, we're talking about getting back to basics. It's our opportunity to reacquaint ourselves with what really matters. I mean, what really matters. The Speakeasy Podcast, real talk about leadership and sanity in the creative industry. I'm Karen Steffel. And I'm Jen Estel. Managing creativity and business, we probably have an opinion on that. No prohibitions. Clearly, we have cocktails. So the Gold Rush, it's sort of like a whiskey sour, but it's made with a honey um, syrup and lemon juice and Old Forester bourbon, which here's the cool thing. Did you know the cool thing? No. Tell me. Yeah. uh, this, This is the only bourbon that has been continuously available and for sale since before, during, and after Prohibition. So this is like legitimate stuff. Yeah. So as speakeasy podcasters, we're, we love a speakeasy, right? We do. And this is it. This is it. Actually, no, but they had approval to distill this, which is pretty exciting. So um, it was originally for medicinal purposes. So if you're feeling under the weather, you add the lemon and the bit of... Honey syrup. Yeah. And th- this is absolutely a cure. It's like a cold toddy. Yes. And it's beautiful. And it's got a lovely mint garnish. So you've got to check it out. Check our website. As you know, you can get the recipe. Love it. So we're talking about uh, getting back to basics and while we sip this delicious drink. Um, so talk to me a little bit about getting back to basics. How do we know that we need to? Well, okay. So what? What? Here's here's what I think is the problem. Yeah. And we've just come off of the holiday season. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I know, right? And the mess around Everything. all of the presents, right? Yeah. So we're all really feeling that, and we just live in a society that's got new, better, shiny, trendy, and it's super tempting. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think it only relates to capitalism. I think it. I think part of the problem is that, in terms of for me getting back to basics, is that it's about time. It is so easy to fill your time and the pace at which our professional and social lives go. I mean, starting by even Halloween, it's just every weekend there's something until the end of the year, and here we are. It was Halloween yesterday, was it not? So I feel like the pace at which we live our lives almost fosters like a fear of missing out that maybe we can tap into, that we're certainly teaching our children. And I think it's a really great time of year to just strip back to what really matters. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. It's like it all goes on. Every new thing, every new habit, every new product, every new all of this stuff, it just, you know, you just put on one little thing at a time and it's like layer of paint after layer of paint after layer of paint until you the door doesn't close in the frame anymore because you've put so many layers on it, right? Yeah, it's going to peel. Or or the other one I liked was kitchen gadget after kitchen gadget that are all one-hit wonders. And you've got to have this great new kitchen gadget. And then you've got to have the next one. And next thing you know, there is no counter space. Right. So our goal sort of today is to strip back and figure out what we can get rid of Mm -hmm. and when the basics matter. And let us be clear, there are some places where, you know, go all out. If you want to change your hair color every single day or... Get the latest trim package on your SUV. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about like the things that are super important to us, which is, you know, what we talked about last last episode, Mm -hmm. the basics are the place to be. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you know when you've lost sight of what's really important to you? For me, I know when things are harder than they should be Mm -hmm. or feel like they take more problem solving than they should. Mm -hmm. That's a good indication. How about you? When I start detaching emotionally to things that I otherwise feel are important, so whether that's work or at home, where I just start feeling a little bit numb, Mm. where I'm going through the motions, Mm -hmm. that's when I know I have lost sight of what's important. Yeah, that's true. And I think the season is a place to really, really examine it. You know, I think in business for me, I see myself, I see a tendency in myself to do this, and I see it a lot in other people that, oh, let's do something new or try a different product line or a new offering. Yep. And so now your your focus is split. It's no longer on the thing that's important. You're doing the side thing or this new product line or this new offering that then is sucking away your ability to do the thing that you were great at before. Yeah. And, it, and if it's not product line or service lines, then it's gadgets, right? I think people who work in technology, like me, we all have an ability to look at the shiny new thing. And that has a little bit of FOMO with it too. Like, oh, the new camera, and that's got the ability to do this, that, or the other thing. But they're tools, 
And when you're a gifted artist, you can use, you know, analog sander or you can use a belt sander and still make a beautiful thing. That's true. And, you know, I don't I don't begrudge anybody the interest and curiosity that comes with something new. Oh, look at this sure. new product or this new piece of gear or whatever. But we know in the end that we made br- great products before mm-hmm. and we're going to keep making them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it, the same applies to your kitchen example. So the same applies at home. You can make a beautiful meal that nourishes your family and gives you the opportunity to spend time together with or without the, the certain kitchen gadget. You mean just in the oven? Yeah. Yeah. Just that oven? You don't even actually need a microwave. Weird. <laughs> you know, we do not have a microwave up at our cottage to my um, family's dismay. They're like, wait, what? I was like, we don't need a microwave. We can find ways to do this. We might as well. It's it's the vacation place. I don't need all of the gadgets that we have from, yeah. from the before. And watching my kids get creative without their microwave has been really a lot of fun. That's awesome. So, Jen, I think we're on the same page in terms of, like, identifying when you're – when you've lost sight of getting back to the basics. So let's talk about getting back to the basics. What do you do? How do you know when it's time to strip things back and simplify? How do you know when it's time to strip back and simplify? Yeah. I think it's when those um, shiny objects have taken your attention. Yeah. It's like you said before, when the things that you know are very important to you no longer evoke the emotion that they should. When they don't bring you joy? When they don't bring you joy or when they feel like process and not celebration, yeah. then you know that you've, you've got to strip some things back. Yeah, when, when they feel like a process instead of a moment. When they feel like a process instead of a moment. And I think that this time of year is a really good time because we've added, right? So right. during the holiday season, we've added 10 pounds. We've added things to our house. We have yet to take down the tree. We have a lot that we're carrying. And mm-hmm. there's great sales on everything that was from last season and now all the bikinis and the summer vacation things are out already. Yeah. So it feels like a time when more, more, more is is the thing to do. I think it's also a time when people get the blues. You know, people have been going at such a pace where there's this post-holiday slump that it's really, and it's also the weather doesn't help, but there's this post-holiday slump that you can find yourself in. And I think if we spend some time stripping back to basics, it's much more simple to just focus on those few things that matter the most to you. And I think that goes back to our our last episode as well. Yeah, I think it does go back to our last episode, but also what you said earlier, if you really think about the basics and the things that are important to you and the things you're great at, I think the FOMO goes away, Mm -hmm. right? That fear of missing out, you're not missing out on this new shiny object Mm -hmm. because you are fully invested in the thing you have or the thing you're good at. Yeah. Well, and if you're taking stock of those things, it's very easy to be thankful for those things, those gifts or those opportunities. And as Brene Brown would say, gratitude is the foundation for joy. That's true. You know, the other one um, that I like to refer to that's one of our favorites is the Marie Kondo method. The, yeah. like, get rid of it, clean it up. There's this really great um, story from the New York Times about this fella, his name's Mimo, and we'll put the um, link so you can see it in our show notes and on our website, but he's a runner. And what I love about it, and it's especially poignant this time of year, a friend of mine who's a runner um, shared this, is his gym is nothing and his gear is nothing. He's just running. Yeah. And his lack of need for external stuff and gym memberships and Mm -hmm. specialized headphones to an extent, is really refreshing Mm -hmm. that we can get to the point where we don't, we don't need all the bits and the parts. We just need the core value Mm -hmm. and off you can go. There's a lot to be learned and that discipline isn't there. So I like that. That's, that to me was a really good getting back to basics. You do not be distracted by all the things capitalism is trying to sell us, which I, I admit I love I love new things. Yeah. And especially being in, in the design industry, we we love to experience something new and different. Yeah. But you don't have to fear that you're missing out somehow. That memo example just shows that as a runner, he has prioritized what's important. He's stripped back to basics. He has. You got, you got some shoes. Yep. And some pavement. Yep. Go. And it's super inspiring. Mm-hmm. And it's a really good reminder that the rest of us can do the things we want to do without the stuff and the processes sometimes that go with it. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, 
we are big proponents of processes when we need them. Yeah. And we're good. We are big proponents of great exploration when it's time. Mm -hmm. But when you're feeling overwhelmed and when you're ready to start a new year, maybe it's time to strip it back and figure out what's basic. Yeah. You know, I've even seen that overwhelm with my kids. And um, I may have shared this before, but when my oldest was really young, I had so many rules, I couldn't keep track of them. And I know it was overwhelming for for him because it was demonstrated in that he could not be compliant with any of them. So <laughs> it really just got stripped down to the three rules that came from school. And they're so perfect because everything as a kid kind of falls into these three things. It's be kind, be safe, be responsible. So when the kids are bouncing off the wall or they're speaking with each other, it Everything kind of boils down to those three things. And even though that isn't related to capitalism, it's about just boil it down to make it simple. And it's so much easier to relate to, so much easier to understand the value behind why it's a rule um, and that there's love behind <laughs> those set, that set of rules that um, it's gotten a lot easier in our house. Yeah. I think about that a lot because I know that that's how you sort of run your family and what you're trying to instill into your children is those good choices. And my kids are in such a different space, and now mm -hmm. I have two drivers, not just one. So I'm letting two of my children off into wherever it is they go with a 2,000-pound vehicle and hoping for the best. Yep. And I could micromanage them and figure out all the details, or I could just say, be safe mm -hmm. and come home. Yep. It's very simple. Yeah. And, and in some ways, that, that gives them both sets of rules, right? Simplified rules. It gives them agency, and it gives them the ability to make their own decisions about what's safe or their own decisions about what's respectful. And so instead of you telling, 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 mm -hmm. they get to make some decisions and feel some ownership of that. Yeah, absolutely. I like that a lot. How about other, other basics for, you know, for work? For work? I think about this one a lot because it's very easy to get distracted by new stuff mm -hmm. in our industry. And I'm as distractible as the next guy, and I love the new stuff. But Or to say yes to the wrong thing. Right. That's tempting. Right. We've talked about that a lot. But for me at work, it's is it a good idea and does it serve the audience? Mm -hmm. Right? And if you if you hold it up to a couple of those measuring sticks, all of the other decision making becomes so easy. Mm -hmm. How about you? Yeah, I think it comes down to, um, and I'm talking about not just project-related decisions, but when I'm faced with any choice, it's does it serve my team, does it serve my clients, and does it serve my well-being, ultimately. Um, because if I'm not, if I make choices that are only good for my team or my clients and not in my um, well-being, then I'm not able to lead as effectively um, so it's not really a selfish choice. It's, it's a right. leadership choice. But also, it has to serve my team who serves my clients. Right. What I like about that, too, is you're getting to that end goal, but the path there, you're not dictating and micromanaging. Yeah. Right? Because serving your team, serving your clients, serving your own well-being, there's lots of ways to get there to that answer, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. And you don't necessarily have to dictate it. Other people can help you get there. Well, and, and opportunities present themselves. And sometimes you want to say yes to an opportunity or yes to some fun or yes to some shiny project. And so sometimes you have to say no to things or sometimes you have you can say, yeah, let's go take advantage of that free time. Let's go try a new thing. And, and so sometimes it's about play and exploration and sometimes it's about um, being strategic about what a next step is. It, and both can exist inside of that decision-making process. That's true. So your basics are really about keeping the people in your sphere healthy and pointed in the right direction and everything else is negotiable. Is that I, true? I think so. Man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about that and see if I can hold up that statement against other decisions that come along the way and see if that really is boiled down to one basic thing. I'd love that. Thank you. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I think for me the basics are – I, and, you know, I like this topic because I am very distractible and I'm very prone to, ooh, you know what we could do, which has nothing really? nothing related to our actual business. I did not know you were doing that. <laughs> hey, let's go do this random thing that has nothing to do with marketing. Hey, okay. let's start a podcast. 
<laughs> well, it's a great ride. It's a good ride. We're having a good time. Um, but if you were to hold the podcast up to the measuring stick that we both have for our for our businesses, it makes sense. Yeah. Where I have other harebrained ideas that do not make sense if I hold them up to a measuring stick. So mm -hmm. it's just really good to think, what are you good at? What do you love? What got you to this point? If you make this decision, is it going to take you off that path? Yeah. And if you're going to go off that path, are you doing it intentionally or just because you got distracted? And I'm going to get back to a thing that you have said so many times to me, and I love it, love it, is you can't always get to your goal, but you can take two steps towards it. That's true. Make it, you never said take two steps to the right. <laughs> you said take two steps forward. That's it. Yeah. And you don't need extra stuff. No. And you, you just don't, need some running shoes. You just need some running shoes. I love it. And that's, you know, part of what I like about this drink is it's not cluttered. It's three ingredients. So simple. So simple. But really paired together, it's the right mix. Yep. And the lemon juice is nice and fresh and the honey will keep you healthy. Buy local honey. I would ha highly recommend it for your health and, you know, support of your local beekeepers. And this booze that's been around since before Prohibition, that's pretty fantastic. You're drinking history. <laughs> You're drinking history. Thanks for sharing a drink with us. As always, you can head over to our website, thespeakeasypodcast.com, to get recipes for our cocktails. Mmm, cocktails. Jen, what are we talking about next time? Oh, I cannot wait for our next episode. We have such a smart and funny woman who we both adore as a guest. Yes. Join us next time as we talk to author Lissa K. Adams about changing careers and how being a romance novelist and feminist can exist in the same space. She is totally breaking the patriarchy, friends. You won't want to miss it. Cheers. Join us next time. Thanks.